All right, here we go. Fredo Bang, welcome back to Vlad TV. What business is Vlad? Hey, man, congrats on all your success. Uh, I actually looked. We had our last interview of May 2021. It seems like a lot has happened since then. Yeah, life, bro. Life. Life, <laughs> success, you know, some you know, some setbacks. But, you know, that's, what right, life, that's right, how life right. is. Roller coaster. Yep. Well, we can't start, you know, the interview right now without talking about the biggest news for you, and that is you have a new baby. Yes, sir. Okay, and this is your first baby. My first. And uh, the details about it are, are very unique. <laughs> you have a unique situation. Yeah. Uh, some babies, well, most babies have a mother and father. Your baby has a father and two mothers. All right. Okay. So, number one. Because there's been some speculation and, you know, there's been some talk and kind of some gray area type stuff. But did you have your baby with Annie and seven Buffins? Yeah. Okay. So, was this baby produced naturally or through in vitro? Well, Vlad. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you like this. I'm not. I'm a. For one, I'm a gentleman. Okay, so fair enough. I'm not. Uh, I'm not the type to undisclose. Uh, if I'm penetrating or navigating or what happens in my bedroom, you feel me? Now, if they listen, if they, if, if any if any woman I'd have been with, you know, feel like telling you know what happens in my bed, that's that's up and them. But I'm not. Uh, I, I feel like it's corny if I was to. Say if I'm, you know what I'm saying, penetrating or not, you feel me? But That's totally fair. Well, well, the reason why I say it is because they actually have another child. Right. And he, yeah. Before before yours, uh, they have well, a son. Well, I'm going to correct you on that, but he my child too. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Being but that they, this is brother, they had I'm a child gonna, before you showed up. Right, 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 right. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, they yeah. had a child before you showed up, and, and they talked about how they went through like a, an in vitro type process mm -hmm. in order to have that baby because yeah, obviously did. it's two women and they needed a, a sperm donor and so forth. And that, that's the reason why I asked, not to get into your bed. No, 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 uh, no, 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 no offense. Yeah. Not because I, yeah. uh, you know, I don't really like try to respond to too many people, but being the fact that that's my son and he and he doesn't have a father and they brothers, they're going to be together for life. At the end of the day, that's my child. I'm always going to look over. You feel what I'm saying? Okay, and the two of them actually did a video, I think it was on The Shade Room, yeah. and they talked about the situation, and they didn't really, I mean, they, they touched on on you, that they said, uh, we have a personal relationship with Frederick, <laughs> yeah. and this is what it is. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and uh, you, you talked about it a little bit also. You said, we met in Miami and instantly vibed like best friends. There's just something different about it. I started working out, eating healthier and shit, just another side of life See, looking good, to this rap huh? shit. So I, got, I got a little weight off my face a little bit, you feel me? Yeah. <laughs> what was it about this couple that really draw you, drew you to them? Um, I feel like over the years, especially after jail and stuff, I done built up like a natural wall to like not really care about anything or, or always be on like just block so much stuff out. And like, I feel like they helping me break down my wall. And, you know, even, like, insecurities and self-esteem. Like, I got a lot of people don't know I got bad self-esteem problems. You feel me? So they have they helping me get into an element that I've never been in before and more confident in myself. That's dope. I love it. I love it. Uh, well, you also said, I was able to bring life into the world with two women that were already the best mothers to their first son and that I know for sure will be great mothers to Peyton also. Yeah. It was the best decision I could have made. A win is a win. Right, right, right. And, the, uh, you know, it's crazy because I always said, I, um, I, I can't get no, anybody my, my seed. <laughs> you feel me? So being that I could see that, like, they was already good mothers and stuff like that, it was, I, when, when it was, that, when I found out that's what it was, like, I, I wasn't mad about it. You feel me? Okay. I mean, listen, I, I understand how, how, you know, entertainer life is. Yeah. Uh, you know, you tour around, there's lots of women out there, you know, there's women after the show, there's women at the clubs. Have you been 
purposely trying to avoid having a child or was there some slip ups, some abortions along the way? Or, well, you know, have you have you been just completely safe and this is when you've chosen to actually have a child? Well, I don't really I'm not I'm not a raw dog. I don't really trust. I don't really trust everybody. Uh, box, you feel me? But right. Um, I didn't think I I could have kids. Actually, hmm. I just I don't know. I just I thought I thought I'd probably just have one. Cause you know I don't know everybody else be having kids. So I just like sure I must can't have any. But sad. Yeah. All it takes is once. All it takes is one. <laughs> All it takes that one time, that that certain time of the month, you know. I mean, because yeah. you can't just have kids. I mean, there's a whole cycle involved in this, you know. This is why right. they they have those little kits in the pharmacy where you you know when you're actually ovulating and so forth. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you also have to go raw dog. You also have to not pull out. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. And I, I'm, I think I invented the pull out. My pull out game, like fire. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. I've got a pretty good pullout game. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, man. But well, listen, I mean, number one, congratulations, you know, being a new father. I mean, that's like the most beautiful thing ever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I say, it's kind of, I'm just still trying to find my, uh, the balance of being there as much as I can and, and you know, uh, still giving my music 100%. You know what I'm saying? 100% yeah. effort so I'm still trying to find that balance but I'm gonna get it I mean how are you doing the balancing thing because do they live near you or um they actually live in Atlanta so okay most like sometime out the month when they free I fly them to hell when I'm free or I'm already on the road if I'm on the road I'm already around I just go pull up stay for a week or two you know what I'm saying stuff like that yeah I mean do you have plans to move to Atlanta to be closer to your child um, I've been thinking about it. It's either that or moving them out here. One yeah. of the two. Well, yeah, man. I mean, what's it like to have a little mini Fredo running around? <laughs> yeah. You digging it? Huh? I said, what's it like to have a little mini Fredo running around now? I don't know, but I'd just be happy. And then when I be away from him, I'd be sad. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm still trying to find my balance, you know? Yeah. I if I was scared because I'm like, man, I don't think I'm mentally prepared to be a father because, like, I be at home and I ain't doing nothing. I just I look at a picture and I get sad. You feel me? So. Yeah. Well, man, listen, uh, props for, for standing up. I mean, there's lots of deadbeat dads out there that are, yeah. you know, either say the kid ain't theirs or once they find out it is theirs, they try to fight over child support and, you know, and create a whole bunch of drama. It seems like you've gone the exact opposite direction. It seems like, hey, this child is yours. Let me embrace the whole situation. It's not the usual situation, but let me embrace it. Let me let me take care of my responsibilities, both financially and time-wise. And yeah, man, that was dope. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Well, uh, leading up to this announcement, though, there was a series of tweets that you had <laughs> that, that are, that are kind of interesting timing-wise. Yeah. Uh, you said uh, stud pussy is top tier. Yeah. So it's the ugly studs who be mad. Chill out. Nobody trying to fuck your ugly, insecure ass. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, what, what what were those tweets about exactly? Um. So with Twitter, with Twitter, I really um, I'm not good at talking. And for one, people be in my likes and stuff, so I just be liking random stuff. And Twitter, I just be sitting there thinking of random thoughts that be on that be on other people's mind. So I really just be telling the truth. You feel me? And one day I was like, man, you know what? This is something that everybody needs to hear. And I feel like um, stud stud cat is 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 very top tier. It's, it's top of the line. Is is top is top shelf. Is high grade. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had a stud. Well, listen, I I just found out stud and um and films was two different things because I was considering every chick a stud. Huh. Yeah. Well, a stud is if a, is a masculine lesbian, yeah, right? Yeah, that's what I just found out. I did, I just found that out. But I feel like I think the same rule applies to them too. Yeah, I mean, because if you're feminine, then you're a, a femme, right? Right. And if you're masculine, you know. Shaved head, 
kind of dress more like a boy, that type of thing. You know, like young M.A. would be a stud, right? Yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. She dresses like a guy. She used to play football in high school. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's pictures of her <laughs> in a football outfit. What position? Oh, shit, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You're supposed to have all the answers, man. I know. I don't have the answers. <laughs> I don't have the answers. But she definitely played football, though. Oh, all right. Okay. I mean, got the helmet, the pads, yeah, the whole I night. See, I see it. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, man, C congrats on what you pulled off. Congrats on the baby. You going to have more? Is this like uh, the first of many, or do you think you're cool for a while? Uh, I don't know. My life, in my life, I, I don't think anything I ever done in my life has been playing. <laughs> I don't even think I was playing. You feel me? So you never know. I might have. <laughs> I was like, what the hell, what the hell, ain't no telling. <laughs> well, let's talk about some of the stuff that's happened since our last interview, uh, aside from this. So... In April of 2021, you dropped the Two Face Bang mixtape. Yeah. Why? Why the Two Face thing? You know, because it's based on the DC comic villain. Yeah. Well, Two Face Bang was uh, originally my first project I ever put out solo, so I wanted to reiterate that and bring that energy back. That's mostly, and um, this is one of my favorite characters. I feel like um, me myself, I like. I think I'm part bipolar. Cause my dad is, so I think I got a little piece of that. And sometimes I fight with my own mental sometimes, and sometimes I be I could be completely happy, sometimes I could be completely sad, and I, you know what I'm saying. I just fight with that sometimes. So it was just like trying to, you know what I'm saying, replicate that. Okay, and the features on this were kind of crazy. Uh, Roddy Rich is on Last One Left. Yeah. How did that come together? Um. I think that was just some relations. We've been had um, conversations in the, in the past. We just never worked with each other. Um, but I think my management got a hold of his or whatever, or, or was already doing business with him and got it done. Okay. Were you guys in the studio together or just? Nah, uh, sent we, we sent it. I've seen him since, though. Like, I know we went play basketball but and stuff like that. Well, we were about to one time, but we made conversations, but. Okay, and then there is Y and W Melly yeah. on the song Brazy. Now you and Melly actually go back. Right. Uh that particular song though, he was already locked up, right? When when it came out. Yeah. So did you guys record that together when, um, when he was so, out? No, we didn't record it together. So Melly already had a song that he had did. I think it got leaked. But the song had a well, no, it didn't get leaked out. It might have, I don't know. The song was already done, but it had a sample that couldn't get good. Uh, the beat was a sample, and it couldn't get cleared. So what we did was how Melly records. I know how Melly records. He records like three, four verses, and then he take pieces. So what I did was I got the session, stripped the beat off, uh, rearranged a lot of his words and stuff. I went back in there, and we put a beat around it. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. That's a banger, by the way. I appreciate it. Now, have you been talking to him in prison at all? He haven't had any, uh, I don't think he's been having phone privileges. I haven't talked to him in a while. Matter of fact, I haven't talked to him around, since since around April. Like, we were sending, like, you know, sending word, like, what's up, fool, how you doing, like that, but mm. I don't have no way of con him contacting me. Well, yeah, I mean, he's going through it. I mean, back in... Was it November of 2021? Uh, they actually put the death penalty back on the table because re remember originally they were taking they took the death penalty off and then the prosecutors actually appealed it and won. So now he's facing the death penalty again. Did you hear about that? Oh yeah. I mean that's your homie. I mean when you heard that, how'd you feel? <laughs> uh, man, I uh, I love Miller to death, bro. There's a lot of things he done did for me, career-wise, uh, to help me get known and stuff. And not just that, uh, I haven't had too many personal relationships with a lot of rappers, you feel me? Like, I done babysit his brother. So, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it's forever love, and I'm in his corner all, all the way through, you feel me? 
Well, yeah. I mean, he actually posted something not too long ago where he said that he's in fear for his life in prison. I guess there's a new captain now and they've like stripped him of all his privileges and like they're, they're fucking with him right now. Yeah. So he's, he's going through it. Yeah. I, I know that feeling. Cause like, like I said, when you in jail, bro, you have no type of power. You are, <laughs> you are not who you are. You are an inmate. And whatever jacket number they gave you, that's who you is right now. When they tell you go eat, that's when you go eat. If they tell you go use it sometimes, that's when you go use it. You feel me? They they control it. Yeah, man, listen, I, I've spent a few days in, in jail here and there, in and the that shit sucked. What you was in jail shit. for? It was like unpaid. Um, no, no, it wasn't unpaid. Uh, well, it, it was a suspended uh, driver's license type shit. <laughs> You know, I mean, not, not, nothing, nothing serious. It was like I was, you know, I was broke at the time, and yeah. I, I was, I, I'd forgotten to, you pay know, it. to, you know, pay my my driver's license shit. They suspended it, and it was going I, to someone, some, can't, someone can't else's address. You, and, I can't picture you getting cuffed. <laughs> man, I got cuffed. I got thrown against the fucking cop car. <laughs> I got roughed up a little bit, and then I got, uh, I got put in the precinct. And then a cop got shot that same night. So we were stuck in that precinct for like three days right. until we were able to get, you know, because everything was on lockdown. Yeah, so then we got yeah. put in central bookings. I remember uh, dudes were having epileptic seizures in the cell, you know, because they were, you know, like drug addicts were like going through it. Uh, that shit sucked, man. I remember when I interviewed Papoose, he said something real deep. He said that when he got locked up, he went to Rikers. He realized right then and there that the only thing lower than being in that situation is death. And that's what made him just kind of change his whole life around. He goes, okay, I'm never going back here. Like this is pretty much the lowest you can go in life. The only thing beneath this, you know, you're not in society. The only thing beneath this is death. So if, yeah. this, is, if this is my future, this is not what I want for myself. So I said, yo, when I get out of here, I'm gonna take this music serious and I'm gonna go try to meet that dude who I heard playing new artists on the radio. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh... A lot of people rather be dead than than, than in that cell, cause you get you get to the wrong jail, you get to the the wrong facility, the wrong line. You can you you, you might experience some of some things worse than anything you didn't faced in your life. You feel me? Like, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't you know if you ever you seen that. You can walk in there and 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 not walk out with a lot of stuff. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you ever saw this clip. It went viral. Uh, Rico Reckless and Ewal Samo, they described something called Savage Life in the Chicago jails. Oh, you're talking about this uh, spitting in the butt shit? Yeah. yeah shit. I, what, what What's yeah. Savage Life? Well, I don't know where this gay shit started from, but this was going on. In Chicago, Cook County Jail, they will knock you the fuck out. Cold. Knock when you, you, out when cold. you hit that ground, you would hit this. Get, get that, that butt! <laughs> Motherfucker gets that. Nah, the nigga that's fighting that be, get the butt. <laughs> Motherfucker gone. Pull your pants down. Pull your drawers down. Open up your ass it's and spin spit. your ass. And now your ass a bitch. Six people line up It'll to be come spin your ass. Spit. Niggas are spinning your ass. I, I don't know about that. I know I always, it was a thing to where, uh, um, because I know some people, see, that's how, this this how I fucked up jail to make you see, when I heard that, it sounded normal to me, cause I've I've been in jail. When everybody else right. said it, oh, what the fuck? That's some, some weird gay shit. But to us, like con like convicts, we know exactly like where that mentality come from, right? So bam, it had a thing to where uh, most of the time, if if now this, I I never partake in this. Let me say this, I never partake in this. But mostly convicts, if they get in a fight, right? Not not most of the time, convicts like to take all their clothes off and they rub baby oil on them. That way, when they fight, it's straight shoulders and nobody grab each other. You get what I'm saying? So, bam, no, most of the time, if the man knock you out, he going to pull your drawers down and he going to put his he going to put his finger in your ass. Because so, he did not. I'm, no, I'm, I'm just saying this 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 would be going on. You feel me behind that wall? That's why I say you can go in there and and you can w not walk out with a lot of stuff. So that way, he basically is telling you, like I done took your manhood. Use the bitch now. Like he like he basically is trying to make you as small as possible. You get what I'm saying? 
and now like what now what you gonna do? The only way you like you well, you can't get that back, but now you gotta kill him. Yeah, now I remember uh China Mac, he's one of my regular guests, and he had done a bunch of prison time. He he described the situation, right? Because you know, in prison, your trunk is your ass, right? That's where you hide everything. Your Gucci bag. Your Gucci bag, right. Yeah. That's what you guys call it? Yeah. Okay, so so your Gucci bag, whatever, right? That's where you hide the drugs. So he was saying how it was relatively normal if, like, a word gets around that someone got some drugs in their ass. Yeah, they're they going to they they beat you up. They're going to pin you down. They're going off in a... Yeah, they go they go knock you out or, or tr- basically beat you down and then reach up in your ass, grab the drugs out your ass. See, so what they'll do is like if you know if 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 motherfucker know that somebody coming through with the bag, he got the bag on him, he'll get knocked out, somebody will knock him out, boom, and then <laughs> put the glove on, right? And you go up in that ass, you go up in that trunk, boy, go up in the trunk and. And grab out whatever the fuck was in there. I seen that shit. I seen that. Yeah, they want. They want. And then go. Yeah, they want take that your mojo. They want that milf. And they want that back or that back. If they gotta go in their right. back, they gonna get that back. That's what they doing. Yeah, and I remember as he was describing, he was like, "Man, this is, you know, like looking at it now, it just seems like a whole different planet." Yeah. One out. man's shit is another man's treasure. Literally. <laughs> Yo, sometimes I be thinking about the shit that was going on in there, bro. Like, I be like, what in the world, bro? Like, I never want to go back to jail, man. It's like a whole fucking different world in there, bro. Like, I was I was like, what? I, that shit tripped me out. But Yeah, but, so I ain't never, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't never played them games. I'm, I don't even know how to, uh. I don't even know how to wipe back that too long. You feel me? <laughs> oh. I ain't never played my Gucci bag. <laughs> I ain't put if I had if I was when I was set of drugs in jail, I used to just keep it in my I used to have like a little pocket that um I had a Migo stitch in the inside of, of it. So when I go in there, I just pull it out the pants. And when they when they go in, if if I'm getting searched, it don't really show too much. You get what I'm saying? I ain't, I mean, I ain't putting you, nothing in my Gucci bag. Uh, okay. How'd you manage to get drugs in a prison? Can you say it, or is it just a, it's a trade no. secret? No, I can't. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, I remember uh, we interviewed uh, Mo Gangat. He's a lawyer that comes in and does the show uh, all the time. We talked about the, the YNW uh, Melly situation and your involvement in it, and he talked about how you refused to cooperate in his investigation. Like, they, you know, because I guess you, you, you were around him around that time. They tried to call you and everything. Your lawyer came in and just said, nah, we're yeah. not cooperating in this. Fredo Bang invoked the attorney-client privilege. He said, I can't answer the questions that you're asking me because I um, have gotten advice from my attorney. And in the course of me answering your questions, I would have to disclose advice that my attorney gave me. And that's privilege information. So because I have that privilege, you can't make me answer these questions. The prosecutors challenged that. And they said, no, you t- answering whether or not Melly called you is not privilege. Just because you talk to your lawyer about it doesn't mean that you can't tell us about it. That would be ridiculous. That would mean you can go and tell your lawyer anything and say, oh, I can't tell you. I told my lawyer. We, uh, we've we offered him full immunity. So he can say whatever he wants and we won't charge him. But then Fredo Bang's lawyers came back and said, yeah, but this is just the Miramar Department. What about Broward County? What about other states? What about the feds? And so unless you're telling me that this guy has freaking global immunity, <laughs> his Fifth Amendment right applies. The judge agreed with that. And uh, Fredo Bang has invoked his Fifth Amendment right to test to not testify, uh, to avoid giving statements that could be used against him and that would incriminate himself. Yeah, I, um, uh, what I can say, I, I, I don't know what's going on with this situation. I don't know who said it, putting me into it, but. I just, you know, had to get my lawyer and defuse whatever they thinking or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, nine times ten, I, I expect them probably they probably gonna keep bothering me because at the end of the day, it's a act. It's still active. You know what I'm saying? It's still trial, so they wanna push and squeeze anybody they can who they think got something going on or, or think could be involved to where like they can get some information. So I expect them being that we friends. I expect them to bother me. You feel me? Um, so that's just what it is.
Well, free YNW Melly, man. You know, hopefully he'll Please. he'll work through this whole situation. And uh, he's been in there what, like five years now, or something crazy? Oh, um, he went in two thousand and nineteen. Uh, Mar- Mar- was it February or March of two thousand nineteen? Yeah, February two thousand nineteen. So it's like four years. Yeah, it's a stretch, man. It's a stretch. Well, another big feature on that same mixtape is No Love featuring Sleepy Hollow. Yeah. And uh, that song has like 10 million streams on Spotify. Yeah. Which I guess is like your fourth biggest song ever? You say fourth biggest song on, on Spotify? I think so, yeah. It could be. Spotify is, a hard, is like, that's my hardest platform. So yeah, it's possible. It's possible. Uh, okay. And how did that song come together? Um... I think I was in the studio. I posted on uh, Instagram that I wanted to hear. I wanted to try a drill beat. Um, I and the bank sent it over. I put some on it. I wasn't in love with it because at the end of the day, it's not my style, but I just like creating all around music. Uh, and I said I would never put it out unless I got a drill artist on it. You feel me? And I, I DM'd a couple of people. As soon as I DM'd him, him, he wrote me back in like 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Stamped the record, sent it back, and that is what it was. Did you guys establish some sort of relationship after that? Oh, uh, we talked. Um, it, I wouldn't say it's like no tight relationship. Like you know, you know, what I'm saying we we, we he cool people. I uh, when I went out there and shot a video, he gave me solid vibes. So you know what I'm saying. I think he like he locked up right now too, free sleeping. Well, yeah. Uh, June 24th, 2022, he got sentenced to seven months on a weapon charge. Oh, okay. He should be coming home then. He's supposed to be released February 13th, okay. which is like a few weeks from now. Right, 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 right. Yeah, man. Free Sleepy Hollow. I, I mean, how is it when, like, you're looking at all these people that you collaborate with and, like, a lot of them are, are, are fucked up right now. A lot of them are locked up and, and facing, you know, various charges. Oh. Well, it, it reminds me to stay smart keep my head on and, and watch what's going on. Cause I mean, a lot of people not noticing uh, these DAs and investigate all these people, they are comp- they competing with each other right now. And and a lot of people helping them. <laughs> they just, they just give them, they to them, you feel me? So I just, I just try to stay out of the way. I try to play video games as much as I can. You know what I'm saying? Watch some anime. I, I think that's what it is. I think a lot of people in the world need to watch some anime and play video games, and and they'll be out of trouble. That's what it is. Well, the, the footage came out in July 22nd of 2021, but there was this footage of SWAT, a SWAT team surrounding your house. No. Yeah. When was that from? I, I think that, that was July tw- 21st of 2021. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was that day. That was that day. Okay, yeah. so what was that over? Oh shit. Um, well, it was supposed to be um my artist um uh, Yosha, Lee Yosha. I had bonded him out but stipulation of his bonds that he had to stay with me. And so it had an old chart like so basically he been in my house for that whole that past year on, on house arrest. But an old charge that they they um decided to put a warrant out for him, which they knew where he was, and he had court that Monday, which they could have just waited till he came. Um, they I guess they decided that they just wanted to take a a, a a thousand mile trip and come pick him up with a lot of uh armed officers and suits and stuff. I guess they they just decided that they wanted to pick him up, and why why they was picking up, they decided to search my house and break windows and stuff. Okay, so were both of you home when that happened? No, I wasn't. I was at the studio. Because normally, my, my studio time, normally, I start sometime at like 7 o'clock and I won't be done till about 6, 7 in the morning depending on my vibe. So, they, I think they came around 6 o'clock in the morning and I got a call from ADT saying I had a fire at my house but it was ended up being smoke bombs and I'm looking on my camera, I see people in uniform running around my house. Okay, was Yoshi at the house at the time? Yeah. Okay, so he got arrested. Yeah. He okay. Got, he got arrested for the um, a warrant. 
Okay. And then they arrested you afterwards? Um, so that day went by. They spent the whole day going through my house. Uh, they was there so long that they fed my dogs and 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 let them. No, I'm for real. They they was there that long that they fed my dogs and let them use the bathroom and walk them. Wow. Uh, I don't know what they were looking for, but they they grabbed a bunch of my computers. They grabbed all my computers and the phones and stuff, a bunch of paperwork and stuff. Um, again, like again, I I don't know what they were looking for, but. They just grabbed a bunch of stuff, and then I had my lawyer contact them, letting them know, like, hey, if y'all looking for me, you know what I'm saying, let me know. And they were like, oh, no, he good. T- tell him he can come home. Because they they broke, they broke cut open my safe, and I think I had, like, 300000 400000 in there. So that's why I worried about I thought they were going to steal my money. But they left it all there. They're like, he got a lot of money in the safe. Tell him he can come home. And what I do, I come home, fix, my own, fix up my house all night, and the next morning, I got a warrant. <laughs> if even for a parole violation, because in under parole, you're not supposed to have no contact with crim with any con- convicted felons. You're not supposed to be in- involved in any crimes and being all po- police contact. So being that that happened, that automatically violated me. And they say they found um weapons at the house, which was from my security that were locked up. So. I had to go through that process, and I got locked up and had to go through the parole here and stuff like that. Right, because you got no bond initially, right? Yeah, because when you're on parole or probation, there's automatically no bond. I mean, how bad was that? Now you're locked up again over some shit that, it's not like some shit you actually did. It was just yeah. like a technicality. Yeah, I, I never in my life thought I'd ever be in jail for something like without a charge. That was the worst feeling ever. Like I, I, I didn't have no charge or anything. I'm just sitting in there. Um, yeah. Then I had to. I, I, when I was in there, I caught COVID from one of the guards. So that was the first time with that. I could. I didn't like their food, so I ate fruit for like three weeks straight. They gave me like, like two oranges. No, like three oranges a day, and some cereal in the morning. That's all I ate for like three weeks. I had to take a twenty, a thirty-five hour ride all the way to fucking Kansas, I mean Kentucky, cause on transport. I got there, the 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 hurricane happened in Louisiana, so I had to stay there for two weeks with no phone or contact. Come back, um, take a twenty-hour ride to Baton Rouge on the paddy wagon, then stay down there and wait two more months for my parole hearing. So, well. While you're in there, you got a lot of fan mail from females. Yeah. I mean, a lot of fan mail with pictures and, and the whole night. Like, you would have thought you were Chris Brown or somebody. <laughs> no, I ain't nobody. I mean, I'm a gentleman, man. Some ladies like me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And you finally got out on uh, November 5th. Yeah, 4th or 5th, yeah. Okay. So that means, what, like four months you were locked up? Yeah. What do you think was the worst experience? Because, I mean, you had been locked up before, but now you're back again. Like, what do you think was the worst thing that you went through this time around? The worst thing I went through this time was, uh, I was being on that car in the back of that paddy wagon for uh, those that 35-hour ride. Because basically, you're in the paddy, paddy wagon. Both sides of the paddy wagon is like this. And as you can see, I'm kind of almost, I'm almost as, as wide as the womb that we're getting. And we turned sideways, so I got to turn my legs. I'm sh- my ankles shackled, my hands and stuff shackled to my ankles. I got to I gotta hold my piss for like five, six hours. Like, I, I almost caught an anxiety attack because it's got this small window like this. So I, then I had to get on somebody's ass, like, hey, get the fuck from by the window. <laughs> for I fall out this bitch. <laughs> so that, I think that was the worst. Other than that, Everything else I done been through before, and, and and you just, it's either you break or you adapt, so. Well, one of my uh, Vlad TV YouTube members, uh, Jerry Porter, he, he brought up uh, the fact that you're actually off papers right now? Yeah, I just got off, like two days okay. ago. How did that feel? That's good, man. It's been five years. I wasn't even supposed to be on parole that long. 
they messed my paperwork up somehow. Mm-hmm. But I had to do so. I had to do five years day to day. Right, because when you're on uh, when you're on papers, it means you're technically still in jail. They're just letting you be out. Like you don't have the same uh, like freedoms that a regular person has. Like yeah, I'm you know, glad you asked it. So probation, probation is when you're on the streets and you are free, but you just gotta abide by the rules. Par- I was on parole. Parole is different. Parole is basically you're still doing your jail time. So I'm still a, I'm, I'm I'm I am still an inmate. I'm just on the streets. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I had and I had to finish. And, and you know we got a stipulation of rules and stuff too. But at the same, but probation is you doing a set amount of time on the streets. And if you go to jail, you got to do what they say if you mess up. P- parole. If I was to go back to jail, I got to finish my jail time. You get what I'm saying? Right. So like the whole thing of like. If your car gets pulled over by the police, they don't need probable cause to look in your car because you're on parole, nah, right? Nah, if they know I'm on parole, I have, if, and they want to search my car, I have to abide by. Right, right. They can go into your house whenever they want. They don't have to get a warrant. You, yeah. you're technically in jail, and you're under jail rules, so yeah. they could, you know, basically toss your whole house up. All that, you just have to take it. Right. Right, but now you're off that. Yeah, I mean, does it feel like a big weight has been lifted? Yeah, definitely. It, but it's it's so crazy. Like it's kind of weird because, like I uh, like I say, I, all I do is play games and stuff, not just to stay out the way. And now I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> well, uh, Lit Yoshi ended up getting sentenced to fifteen years hard labor. Is that right? Yeah. What does hard labor mean in Louisiana? Man, uh. I think that's something they just say because when I got sentenced, uh, I got so I got sentenced to seven years non-aggravated, right? And at the end of it, he said, "I sentenced you to seven years non-aggravated hard labor," and I and I told my lawyer, "Like what the fuck you, you told me?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But nah, that's just something they say. Uh, but I think that I think that also intertwines with um, sometimes they throw us in the fields, like I was out there picking potatoes and shit. Really? Yeah, so, like, I think that, I mean, I, I think, don't quote me on this, but if they tell you go into the fields and go pick potatoes and, and plants and all that stuff, you got to go do it. Okay. What was it like sitting there picking potatoes with a bunch of other inmates? No, 105 degrees. I ain't going to lie. You get some funny moments, but it's 105 degrees out there sweating. I got bit by two spiders in my face. Oh, type of, ugh. that's a hell. Yeah, man. Yeah. And, that's why uh, you got a lot of. That's why you got a lot of rappers who uh, who do same bullshit over and over. Because when they, they be just be going to jail, getting bonds, they ain't never get sentenced and, and have to go work in those fields and shit like that. That shit. That should get all the criminal shit out of you, for sure. <laughs> you you come back like me, like a, a law abiding citizen. <laughs> well, uh, Lit Yoshi ended up getting sentenced to fifteen years, like I said, and. He's actually awaiting uh, multiple murder trials. Uh, I think he got some more cases uh, that he's yeah. fighting. But as of right now, what he got sentenced to, he's appealing because uh, that wasn't um, that wasn't technically how 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 what it was supposed to go. Like it's it's, it's weird. I don't want to disclose uh, undisclose too much information with this stuff. But we try. He trying to find a, a, a better situation. Okay, and that's actually your artist, right? He signed you. Yeah. So you guys have been talking? Uh, yeah, definitely. We up? talk like every two, three days, whenever, okay. whenever he call. Well, free lit Yoshi, man. I'm sorry you're going through that. And him him as well. Well, I remember in September, well, I guess you were still locked up at the time, but you had tweeted that you want to get out of your Def Jam contract. Yeah. And, and you had been signed to Def Jam kind of from the beginning. Um... Well, I was I was home a year and a half before I signed with Def Jam. I was in the pen okay. for a year and a half. Okay, so why did you want to get out of the contract? Uh, I tweeted that just because they had did something to piss me off, and I, I and being in jail, I can't call like normally when they make me mad, and I, I'm a, when they, when I say make me mad, they just not doing what I want or how I want at that moment. So it's not necessarily they doing something wrong. It's just me being pissed off. So normally when I get mad. I email everybody in the group text and tell them how I feel. 
<laughs> you feel me? Meaning that I couldn't do that, I told who was running my page, I told him to post, and I told him correct that shit or let just let me out my deal. Like they did, they just did something that I didn't approve of, and I'm like, who who gave y'all permission to do that type shit? So. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, that next year you talked about how being on a major label, it's difficult to get your music out. Yeah. Uh, I feel like they doing all this rule changing and stuff. They need to make it easier t- for us to turn in and, and release this music. Like, it's just too, it's too complicated. It's too much paperwork. It's too many steps. It's t- it, they need a two, three, two to three week timing for singles, for, for albums. They need a month. Uh, or two, like it's just too much, bro. And it gets stressful to where the artists can't even focus on the music anymore. You know what I'm saying? Okay, are you still signed to Def Jam or are you off? Yeah, I got um, I got like I got two more albums with them. Okay. Well, uh, one of the songs that you put out was uh, "Free Thug." Yeah. And this was right after he got arrested, I guess. Uh, I think he had been in jail for a, lim- a couple some months. Okay. Are you close to Young Thug? No, I met him before, and, uh, you know, I used to be in a relationship with his sister. But I look at, like, he's one of my favorite artists, so I always looked up to him. I don't know if he know that. Well, yeah, you had the line, even with the hate, I'm going to show a little love, rapping ain't a crime, tell him free Young Thug. Yeah. And I guess you're referring to how the lyrics are being used in this case. Yeah. When you see that whole situation... And, you know, I've gone through the whole indictment multiple times. And, yeah, there's, there's lyrics all over that case. Uh, there's Instagram posts all over that case. Uh, you know, I mean, do you feel it's unfair to use lyrics? Or do you think that in certain cases, if the lyrics do match up to the actual crimes, it's it's kind of fair game? I feel like if you don't say for, for word for word, I killed this person on this day, <laughs> if you even... I feel like there's no, it's no way your lyrics should be used because us rappers lie every day. I don't lie about stuff, you know what I'm saying? I don't, <laughs> but I mean, if you don't, I feel like if you don't, if you're not actually stating who you did something to and that person on this day, you no, know, I feel like the, 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 it, it can't be used because I could, I could take something that somebody says and I can, I can, Flip it to say something else. You get what I'm saying? So it's like it's like a cheat code for DAs and prosecutors. Well, in that same song, you talk about how dudes dudes be telling. Yeah. I mean, when you look at that case, you know, and this is very much a, you know, a source of debate. Like, for example, you know, Gunna took a plea deal where he admitted that YSL is a gang and a criminal enterprise. I think Lil Duke did the same thing. A bunch of dudes took these plea deals and they got like these insane probation numbers, like 15 years probation and and shit like that, like stuff that I'd never heard of before. I mean, do you feel like guys like Gunna were cooperating or do you feel like, you know, and I've talked to Gunna's lawyer, he's very adamant about he didn't cooperate, that what he said it's not going to hurt anyone else, and it can't be used in their cases and so forth. But, you know, you have a lot of debate right now in hip-hop over that. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to say, for one, I don't like speaking on no other man or, or they, they situation, but I'm going to answer because I feel like a lot of people out there need to hear this. Um, I, I, I don't, I'm saying, when I say a lot of people need to hear this, I'm stating for, like, the, the dudes that's still in the streets and need and, and it might can help somebody in a bad situation get out, right? So, I've never been in a case with another person, so I never had a file partner. But if you have a file partner, right, y'all go, all y'all go to jail for the same thing. Let's just say it's 10 of us, and all of us go to jail for one gun. Let's just say all of us, 10 of us was in the sprint event, all of us went to jail for one gun. If we sit here and we shut up, they cannot find you guilty on possession of a gun that 10 people could be convicted can can because because no nobody said it's, it's ours or not you get what i'm saying that's one thing so just shut up for two um i i, I really i don't want to speak on this man but i not i don't i don't care about gun i don't i don't got nothing to do with what they got going on but 
Me personally, I would never. Taking time is cool. Taking a, you know, taking probation, whatever, all that, all that's cool. I would never agree that my label is a game. Cause it's not. It's a label for a reason. You feel me? I would never, I would never agree that my label's a game. I would never agree that my label has did any crimes. Um, even though I was to plead out, I would still say, I'm pleading out. I'm taking this time to get out of jail for, to go back to my family. But I would never agree that this is a, a gang or we're committing crimes. Um, and also, in a situation like that, when it comes to gang violence, gang activity and all that, just because y'all pleading out don't mean the case over because now the feds could come pick it up. And so all that shit that y'all, all everything that all y'all just took time on, y'all might go do fed time for. God forbid, but, you know. Yeah, no, the feds could could absolutely pick it up. Yeah. But that's always the fear. And, and, you know, a lot of people, for example, they compare it to this big shootout that happened in Waco, Texas. Uh, a bunch of uh, bikers got into it. Bikers, uh, a, a bunch of people got fucked up and nobody said anything and everybody went home. Right. Nine people were killed. 177 people were arrested. Nobody spoke. All charges dropped for everyone. Yeah, because they can't put it on anybody if they don't have no evidence that they did something. Right, right. That's just an example of everyone keeping their mouth shut, sitting in jail, going through the process, not wanting to get out early. You know, and, and this is this is really big in biker culture. I remember I read the the book, uh, Sonny Barger's uh, book. He's the one, he was the founder of the Hells Angels. And he was talking about it, the exact same situation. A bunch of guys were, you know, hemmed up. Everyone just sat there. All the Hells Angels just sat there and were, were told by the leader to shut up. No one said nothing. Everyone went free eventually. But I like, a lot of people don't have no OGs. Like, a lot of these young dudes don't have no OGs to teach them games and stuff like that. Like, um, man. When you have a co-defendant or you, you have other people, when you when you do take time or when you dealing with your case, as far as like like I say, co-defendants, you're not just worrying about yourself. You feel me? You're not supposed to, unless you don't give a fuck about that person. Like I said, again, like I'm not talking about nobody's situation. I ain't saying whatever somebody decides to do, that's on them. But if I had a co-defendant, Especially if it was a gang activity, and he's being pointed as as a leader, you know what I'm saying. And I know I want I want my my labor CEO to get home. I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna take anything that's gonna jeopardize his freedom. I think that was the same way with Bobby, if I'm not mistaken, huh? Bobby took some more time yeah, or something to you know. I interviewed him about it. Uh, Bobby took like more time so Rowdy can get less time. Now, you know, I, I think, you know, a very important thing that I want to talk about, you know, before we get into the rest of the conversation, is that when you actually got sentenced, from what I understand, you could have gotten a shorter sentence, but you took a slightly longer one because Rowdy Revel would have gotten a longer one. So can you explain to me, like, kind of the details of what happened? Uh, so on resolution, we got the court, they chose me to and um, they they offer a little more time, so they gonna cut some time off his shit, and that was it. Ain't nothing else to talk about. Yeah, see, it's it's more it's it's way more confusing. It's, it's more to it um, when you got co-defendants and stuff like that. So, but I've never been in that situation. All I can say is I just would never agree that my labor's a gang, and uh. In, in in this situation, I wish for the best for me and the people who are around me. You know what I'm saying? Because anybody I deal with is family. You know what I'm saying? So, but like I say, they situation, they situation. Uh, I'm not calling nobody a rat or nothing. That's 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 their business. I, I'm this, today today's people got too many opinions, and they feel like their opinions matter about people. Yeah. Well, ultimately, I mean, when it comes to trials, public opinion don't mean shit. I would say jury? free thug though, man. Free thug. I, music yeah. been dry as hell since he been in jail. Yeah, I mean uh, that trial is going to go for they're saying about a year. I mean, just the jury selection alone is going to take like five weeks, 
And then, you know, there's the whole situation where one of his co-defendants tried to give him a Percocet. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to honestly tell you the truth. A lot of people say, look at that as, oh, he tried to slide him something. No, I feel like he tried to bust him, but I don't know, dude. You feel me? Because why would you try to pass me a pill in open court around police <laughs> and stuff? Like, no, that, that, that was just crazy. Yeah, I mean, if, the fact I, that, I mean, I you know like there's you cameras at, everywhere. Yeah, if you look at Thug, you're like, he was confused. Like, nigga, what you doing? Get this off me. Uh, you got, man, I'm telling you, you got to watch some stuff, man. You people, you people listen. When they want you bad enough, bro, they do some real slimy shit. It's, <laughs> the justice system is, uh, they, they, they try to get justice by any means. They be on some Malcolm X shit sometimes. You feel me? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, can you imagine you sitting there fighting for your life? You know, court, you know, trial is starting. You're facing whatever. And somebody come drop a, a, some drugs in your hand and open court yeah. on camera. Come on, man. <laughs> that shit was insane, man. And then they played the video back and it's like, oh, shit, he actually did that shit. But I guess I guess Thug was cleared of any wrongdoings. He basically said he doesn't even know the guy. And even though he's a co-defendant, this is someone that. I mean, well, the guy, the guy that actually actually looked it up, the guy that slipped him the perk or tried to slip him the perk, he already has been convicted on a murder charge. Yeah. So listen, so I'm, he, not, I'm glad you said it. So check yeah. me out. <laughs> Those people will place people inside your case that you barely know. Okay, listen, you already got all this time for this murder charge, right? We're going to go on knock 10, 20 years off of there. You take this drug right here. And you go put it in his lap. As soon as he put it in his pocket, if Thug would have put that drug in his pocket or tried to keep or hide it, guess what charge you would have got? Drugs. Inside inside a subpoena system. You feel me? Which is worse. <laughs> it's hard to fight a jail a jailhouse charge. You feel me? And open court around cameras and stuff. All they needed was Thug to put that in his pocket or try to keep it from the police. That was another charge. So, yep. You got to watch out for the eat people, man. That's why I, that's why I say I, I play video games. I watch anime. <laughs> that's that. Well, in October of 2022, you dropped the UNLV album. And Soldier Slim is on it. Yeah. Okay, now the UNLV title, does that have to do with the cash money UNLV? Kind of like a homage to that whole era? or? Um. So basically... UNLV and Soldier Slim, all that. I feel like it was, it was, it was basically, uh, um, all around salute to all of them, cause all of them are uptown. That UNLV, uh, they started that, and we adopted that back in Baton Rouge, cause we from the uptown of South Baton Rouge. You get what I'm saying? So that's how that went. Okay, yeah, and I interviewed uh, one of the dudes from UNLV. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a hell of a story. Yeah. It's it's a hell of a history lesson right there, and you actually had Soldier Slim in an interlude, and you had a verse doing a feature. Yeah. Okay, big Soldier Slim fan. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> of course. Like you from, you from Louisiana, you can't you can't not be a Soldier Slim fan. I, I think it's like against the law. You might get time for it. <laughs> but um, as far as that, I had. I had did the sample, cause, cause basically UNLV, I wanted to take it more Louisiana, right? So I had did that sample, and I did the interlude, and so we had to reach out to his family and stuff and get the clearance and all that stuff. So part a part of the agreement was he needed to be featured on. I'm like shit, yeah, I'm, you know what I'm saying? That, that's not something that I would ask for. You feel me? I feel like you know I'm not deserving of being featured. Featuring Soldier Slim, you know what I'm saying? But that was part of the agreement that they wanted on their side. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, hell yeah. Who else can say they got featuring Soldier Slim on their on they project? Yeah, no. I, I remember I interviewed Juvenile, and we talked about how, like, remember when Slow Motion came out? Yeah. That was actually a Soldier Slim song. Yeah, I know. But, but he gave it to Juvenile because Juvenile was already kind of on. And you get your first number one song with Slow Motion. Yeah, and really it wasn't my song, Soldier Slim song. So technically, exactly. I never took credit for that record because my dude created it, and it was supposed to be on his album. And he he kind of like he went to my brother and asked my brother to talk to me, like talk your brother into putting it on his album. I think it'd be a better look on Universal than the company he was signed to. So that's how that went. But that was pretty much Soldier Slim number one single. 
yeah. you know, cash I watch, money I watch was on almost fire. all your, your, your okay. Uh, well, thank your, you, your thank video, you. Like, yeah, I'm a very, I like this. I'm a type of person. I feel like even if it's the dumbest person in the room, that's not talking about you. Even if it's the dumbest person in the room, it's something that I could take from the situation. Like even everybody look at the Kanye like crazy with everything he got going on, but it's some stuff that he's saying and doing that you can take from. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people just not interpolate. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like it's always something. Plus, I like to know about history behind the scenes of stuff that I seen when I was younger and I didn't co- comprehend. Or you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think like if Soldier Slim didn't get killed, like he really could have been a major figure. Like, cause he was like, like I said, that song. I I remember I was in Atlanta. BMF had flown me out, and like that song was like the soundtrack to that whole week. Like, yeah. that's all they played. Like, it was huge. Yeah. Um, he definitely be, like, he won the Kings of Louisiana already. Uh, the only thing I say, and it's not to say offense, uh, a, a probably one of a lot of, of, of us street rappers, the ones who actually been in the streets, we got a bad habit of uh, going back to our old, our old ways. And, and so if, if if you can break that that chain, of that, that gangster chain, that gangster mentality, and 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 it's hard, bro. Cause I like I didn't deal with it, even with labels. When when, when I first start signing label, when I get pissed off, my first thing is either fight or go or go go further. You feel what I'm saying? And I had to break that mentality dealing with these people in the office. It's not gonna get you anywhere. You know what I'm saying? They still gonna make money off of you. So I feel like if he would have been able to break that chain, he could he could also be um like he he won a king of, of Louisiana, but he could have been wait something even bigger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, Soldier Slim had drug issues. No. Uh, that, that, that was that was out there, and you know, I mean, he, we we all do. I mean, some well, people, his, some, some his, people his more were, extreme. Uh, yeah, his were a little more extreme, and you know, I mean, I, I talked to some people around him, you know, in private conversations, and he like, you know, listen, he 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 would get high, and sometimes he would rob people, you yeah. know, in in order to try to you know keep the habit going, and you know, what I'm saying like yeah, that nah. that type of thing starts to catch up to you after a while, and you know, ultimately he got killed. I think like in front of his mother's house or something like that. It was it was it was a fucked up situation. That's why I say, if, um, you know, if someone's able to break that that chain, break that mentality, you know, what I'm saying we can go way further. Well, Jay the Youngin is on that same project. How close were you guys? Man, like I said, I don't really get close to a lot of rappers, but he done been in my home. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can talk. That I actually talked to him like two, three hours before that happened. We were scheduled to shoot the video. That's what, that's actually why I shot the free throw video. We was actually supposed to shoot something that we, um, it's just, that was my little dog, man. Yeah, I did one of his, uh, one of his first interviews. You know, it wasn't his first interview, but it was like maybe like his second or third interview. And uh, well, I mean, listen, he he had drug issues as well. Uh, I mean, he basically said that he's on perks during the interview and he had to stop the interview to go throw up. Yeah. You know, like in my in my lobby, essentially. But then he got it back together and, you know, he uh, yeah, he was getting himself together. Yeah, he got himself back together. He finished the interview off and, you know, I got to see him grow and, and become a bigger artist. And he went to jail for a while. And then he got out and it seemed like, okay, he he's back on his grind and he had a real fan base and he had a real talent. And then when you, when you found out what happened, uh, that July, he got ambushed by, by five, five guys. Uh, his dad was shot twice himself. He ended up, you know, returning fire. But after the smoke cleared, his son was dead right there at his house. Uh, when you found out that happened and you had just spoken to him a couple hours before, what did you think? Uh, at that moment, uh, um, I don't know, bro, because I, I, I had just talked to him. So when they were posting, I didn't believe it. I was just blowing everybody's phone up. They were keeping me updated, and I knew he was fighting it, you know, trying to fight it. But mm, I don't know. I can't explain the feeling, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, I don't get close to a lot of people. So if I, I build a relation with, with shit with you, I, re- I really fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? I got your back. And... You always, I guess, I guess, I always feel like it's more I could tell people, or if I knew the situation, because like I never knew that he was. I knew he was on house arrest, but I didn't know he was house arrest there, at this particular house. 
You know what I'm saying? And and I would have just tried to talk to him about just being better, way more on game. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, it's like, like I say, sometimes I'll, like, I, I be needing to be reminded to be on game. Sometimes I'm slipping. You feel me? I be needing, everybody be needing that. So I wish I could have been there and, and delivered that to him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, rest in peace, uh, Jay the Younger, man. It was, uh, like I said, it was a dude that had some problems, but it seemed like he was getting over his problems. It seemed like he had gone through some issues, but he was getting over it, and he was still focused on his career. And because yeah, I had talked to him, him. when well, he got for, for for his gun charge and stuff, I'm like, bro, you got blissed. He's like, yeah, you're right. I'm like, bro, you really got blissed. So you know, go on here, take this, get over the, the couple month papers, and go on here, and you know what I'm saying, go for a drive. You feel me? And, and, that was the game plan. Like we all we supposed to drop a tape together. Really? Oh man. Well, yeah, man. I, I just got to interview him one time. That was our only interaction. Uh, you were obviously a lot closer to him, and I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sad. Well, I remember in uh in July of uh 2022. Uh. You said you're single until you get over your crush, who was a uh, Regina Carter. Yeah. Is that still your crush? Nah, I'm over it. You're over it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over it. I'm over it. She 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 very beautiful though, but you know she in a relationship, and I'm not a, really a type of disrespectful relationship. You know what I'm saying? I don't have no problems with her dude or nothing like that. Um, I actually, um, I've actually been trying to get in contact with them because I got a song that's gonna come out on one of my next albums where I say her name. So like, when that happens, I like to contact them, be like, and because I don't like changing shit. So I want, I gotta contact them, let them know that it's a, that's an old verse. Okay, what do you say in the verse? I say these hoes want my attention, but but they don't look half as good as Regine. Okay. Yeah. O- okay. Yeah. That's yeah, what it I'm is. over that crush now, though. I'm over. It. You're over it. All right. Fair I got, enough. I got some new ones now. Well, this interview, originally my plan was that I was not going to ask any NBA young boy questions. Because I remember the last time I, I brought him up, you had posted the TikTok <laughs> with the uh, with the, yeah. with the Je- Jeopardy music but playing listen, in Black, the background. Say, I don't take no, the way you ask your questions, I never take offense because you also, you also asked me about my music. I, and I like a challenging interview. A lot of interviewers, they get on here and they ask me, tell me something about Baton Rouge, and I'd be like, what you want to know the population? Like, it's fucking boring. And I I understand, like, with social media, like, it's one of the biggest topics that they put us against each other. So I be understanding. It's just be the respect. You do it a respectful way. You know what I'm saying? So I don't be tripping. Well, yeah. I mean, my whole thing was, okay, look, if the two of you had been going back and forth forever, we had already talked about it, I wasn't going to bring it up. We had talked about it before. I was done with the topic. But then what happened was on December 23rd, it actually it was actually announced the two of you had gotten on the phone together and had squashed your beef and actually put together an event, which was uh, an NBA and uh, TCG joint event. Is that accurate? Uh, somewhat. A lot of details. Uh, you gotta be more specific because they got so many stuff out there that's false. That is, it was they. Yeah, they was talking about a concert. They were talking about all type of stuff. Uh, okay, so 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 let's let, let's just talk about what really happened. You know, because so, like you said, there was a lot of different different stuff out there. So, did the two of you get on the phone together? We talked. How did that talk go? Um. It was basically us talking, and uh, like I say, it's never been a problem. Social media hype stuff up. I might say something in my song. He might say something in his song. And sometimes, you know, as as artists, we might try to challenge each other. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, you feel me? But it was more so of us, how can, like, how can we show that it's never been a problem from the start? You know what I'm saying? Like, let them know it's never been a problem. We just never, we just don't talk to each other. And you know what I'm saying? We got history that we don't talk to each other, but it's never been a problem. So it was like, shit, let's do a talk. Let's do something for the kids. Which we, we were supposed to do something for, like I say, we were supposed to do something for a charity or something together way a, a long time ago. But I, the, some some high ups in the court offices and stuff 
cut like I think the chief of police or somebody they cut they cut it. Right, because I guess in 2018 you said that you were supposed to squash the beef, but the government stopped it. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said it. it's not squashing beef because it was never beef to squash. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm bad. just, right. no, I'm just, right. I ain't yeah, saying. No, you're right. You're right. I shouldn't, I shouldn't phrase yeah. it that nah, way. Nah, yeah. I just want to yeah. rephrase it because everybody. That's when, when, when they did the posters. That's what they kept saying. And I'm like, bro, y'all making it not about the kids and toy drive. It ain't about us. You feel me? It's about the kids and the toy drive. You feel me? And that's why. That's another reason why I kept. I wanted to invite more rappers from the city and stuff, so it wasn't just about us. You feel me? And a lot of people, I know, I know a lot of people mad that I did it, but I'm like, I, I, I had to look at my, in my, in the mirror every day. You feel me? And tell myself, I ain't, I ain't put a smile on a child's face because of, because of how, you know what I'm saying? Oh, it's gonna make me look weak. Like we never had beef from the get go. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was just, it was like, just basically showing that publicly. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm tired. I really don't give a fuck what everybody think. I let them talk, but. We feel like, you know, it was time to just show that people, it's never been a problem or nothing like that and do something for the kids. Okay, so you guys had the conversation and the conversation went well. Yeah. Okay. Was anything sort of brought up and cleared up along the way during that conversation or was it more like, okay, fuck all that old shit, doesn't matter, let's just move forward? Oh, fuck. Man... I think I think one thing we talked about was like around the time cuz like I said I went to jail a, a while, you know, a while back before he popped. So before he when he left TGG, uh it was a conversation we had like man, you know, why he left, he thought this this that that. It was that that's that's something we talked about as far as okay. that, but other than that, it, like I say it was it was never um, it was never no real beef, you know what I'm saying, to even squash. So that's a, that's one thing that I wanted everybody to, to stop. That was kind of annoying, and it just made it just made it not about the, the, the toy drive, the kids. You know what I'm saying? Well, you had the toy drive. It's called Unity in the Community. That's a, that's another thing. We that was an issue. Like the whole fly looked like it wasn't about the toy drive. <laughs> so, <laughs> you feel me? Like, but I understand because a lot of people were. From our city was so excited and happy to see uh, see like just us do anything together. So I understand, but it was it's just you know I understand. Well, he himself could not make it, right? Because I guess he had a, a legal situation. I don't know if it was house arrest. Yeah, or, I think he on house arrest or something like that. He can't yeah, travel. Exactly. Uh, but his brother NBA OG three, who I've interviewed before. He actually made it, and there's a video of the two of you guys actually talking to each other. Yeah. Was that the first time you guys have talked? I mean, in a while? Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what was that whole vibe like when, when you had, I mean, because obviously he came with all the NBA dudes as well, and you were there with all your guys. I think, I think, um, I th- only person that was with him was one person, besides like some family members and stuff, uh. I'm I'm very bad with faces and stuff sometimes, especially when a lot going on, cause my senses just be like, you know what I'm saying? So many people around, I'm steady looking, and I be trying to remember faces. So, uh, like just like I didn't know one of them was like dude, my like his mom, uh, three mama or whatever. I didn't know that, um, but uh, it wasn't no bad energy. Um, I spoke to um, I spoke to his mama. She spoke to me. Um. As far as three, it, I mean, it wasn't no bad energy. Only thing I ain't like if somebody tried to make us hug. I don't be with all that hugging shit, hugging men. Now nah, I hug a woman. I ain't hugging no man. <laughs> okay, man. Well, I'm I'm glad because uh, I feel that that really kind of split up Baton Rouge a lot. You know what I'm saying? With people taking sides and then, you know, it, it spills into social media. And then, you know, we talked about it last time, how kids would have like parties with your face on a pinata and, yeah. you know, just oh, a bunch of dumb shit that, that's know. just like, you know. When it, when it comes to things, I feel like mentally a lot of people have this one king thing in their mind. You feel me? So it's hard people look at, when, when you look at two kings, 
automatically what you think those, those two kings are going to do. They're going to fight to be the top king. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's what's been the the complicating things. Like, people ain't used to two kings. You feel me? I'm up and coming. I've always had a name in the city. He big, he one of the biggest artists out. They automatically put us against each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, I mean, I was thinking about this the other night. I mean, honestly, the only place where you should really have competition is if it's like a sporting event. You know what I mean? Where there's only a certain number of slots and there can only be one champion and, you know, people get naturally eliminated through the actual structure of it all. But when you look at sort of open situations like music or, you know... Look even how people the, keep putting Drake against Michael Jackson, who the biggest artist of all time and all this shit. Right. Like, why is this a conversation? They both two kings. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, are there bigger, you know, media outlets than Vlad TV? Yeah. Does Vlad TV do great? <laughs> you know Vlad, what I mean? Do I Vlad feed my TV family? Get, do I live a great lifestyle? Vlad TV get put up against other people. Right. You're but, not competing. I've, I've always, You're just doing yeah, your I've thing. I've always thought it was, yeah, I've always thought it was stupid. And I've always felt like, you know, like, like I have other media outlets that, that, that continuously try to beef with me, but most of them, you know, like for example, Academics, No Jumper, um, you know, Charlemagne, Math Hoffa, like we all just fuck with each other. Yeah, that's why I you like I like when y'all interview each other. I like exactly. Like they all come to my platform and I go to their platform. Like I'm on academics, I'm on No Jumper, I do the Breakfast Club, I go on Math Hoffa's uh, My Expert Opinion, and then they go and do the same for me, and everybody wins. Yeah, and, but- and on top of that, we all keep in contact. So if it's like one person ends up, hey, you know, do you know about this new like YouTube feature? Oh, you know about Facebook? It's also making money over here. Like I'll call people up and put them up on game and they'll do the same. If there's like someone I've interviewed that they want to hit up, I'll, I'll try to connect them and vice versa. And it's like, I never understood the co- when you have the competition, you can't do any of that shit, right? You, you can't fuck with someone if you feel like they're your enemy and you're, you're both going for the same slot. And and everyone ends up losing in the process. It's, a, it's the same way with music. And both yeah, of, that's what I'm and saying. Both of, both of us, we rap about... You know what I'm saying? Street street shit, so shooting all that stuff. So it's easy for those that to be interpolated against each other and stuff like that. And then uh, what do you know? Now we free thug. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's the same it's the same stuff. Like it's just but I gotta say it's it's people's mentality and they don't know like a lot of people on these YouTube channels, they don't know that these pe the these investigators are really really watch these YouTube videos. So when you come up with your own thesis of this is beef and this is how it's going. This person killed who? They taking all that that you they saying in consideration. We'd have been told this before. You feel me? I'd have right. been told to my face that hey, we watch a YouTube video. We know y'all beefing. Like what the fuck? You know, so it's crazy. But it's the world you got to deal with it. Well, someone you knew, uh, one of your uh, they they say it's a Fredo Bang affiliate, a guy named uh, Seven Hardaway. Yeah, that's one. He got killed uh, in September of last year. Were you guys close? Yeah, definitely. What was the situation around that? Do you know? I mean, I have I have no idea. I don't. I, don't, I, I think it was some random stuff. I think they thought he was somebody else or something. I, don't, I have no idea. <sighs> yeah, I just uh, I don't know. I try. I'm just trying to stay focused and um, stay positive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean that's tough. I mean, because was he actually on your label as well? No, I've I've helped him uh let him use my platform, my YouTube and stuff, but uh, I'm not the type to make any any of my partner sign to me. Like I help him as much as I can and stuff like that. He was doing his own thing, the independent route. Well, uh one of my YouTube members, uh Mob. He asked, is there, a, is there an update on the G-Money album? Because isn't that supposed to come out? I have no idea. I, um, <laughs> I, 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 last time I heard about G-Album G was when, before I came to jail, when he, when, uh, before I got out of jail, when they did their first one. And um, when I wasn't a part of that, uh, I, I was in my feelings about that because, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, this could be G-Last album. I want to be a part of this. So I, after that, I just never wanted to be involved in it. So 
I have no yeah. idea. If they do do it, I hope they make it sound up to par. And how I think he would want to hear, I hope, but I have no idea. This before, we had an interview scheduled with him when he got killed. Yeah. You know, it was like maybe a week away or, or something like that. Yeah. And I remember uh, yeah. we he talked hold, about he how. He held off on it for, uh, for me. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I remember you told me how excited he was to do the interview and everything else like that. And yeah, man, it's tough. Rest in peace, G Money. Yeah, I, I always thought that he was a star. You know, I remember when first watching his shit, I remember like someone pitched me the interview. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, no, th this guy, this guy gonna be something big. Let's let's go hurry up yeah, and lock he, him he in. Had the, he had the natural, uh, he had that natural energy as a star. You know what I'm saying? He know how to make people gravitate to him. I was always the anti person. I didn't like to talk to nobody, nothing like that. Yeah. Well, it seems like since last time, you've turned up on Twitter quite a bit more. Okay, so I've been trying. I, I just be just tweeting some random stuff. However, I, whatever comes to my mind, that's what I put on Twitter. All right. I remember I even tweeted you. I responded. I said, I would pay to see you do stand-up. <laughs> I think you retweeted <laughs> that shit. <laughs> well, uh, one of the things you said on Twitter, you said, I eat ass, but I don't suck toes. Yeah. To each his own. To each his own. Yeah, I ain't messing with no feet. So you will eat a girl's ass before you'll suck her toes? When you get in the shower, which one you will you wash first? I mean, the toes are kind of getting washed just by the water falling down. No. <laughs> you you got to think, for one, listen, I'm about to tell you, for one, your, your toes are always like this. They close, right? <laughs> okay. When you get out the shower... You ever look in between, like, it's still damp and they, they cracking and all that stuff? That's 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 from them being moist because that moisture's been sitting right there. And that's how you get feet, feet fungus and all that stuff. It's easy to get it. You know what I'm saying? It's just, okay. Hey, man, listen, I've I've done some some freaky shit in the bedroom also. I'm not going, I'm not putting down nobody. Got, let me find out you got a fungus mouth, man. A fungus mouth? I mean, I've sucked toes before. I'm not, I'm not yeah. gonna lie about it. I've now, look, I, toe gonna, or two. I, was, I, I hate feet because I know what my feet look like. But I also <laughs> when used to say I would never eat cat. So I don't know. Maybe maybe in life I might change. But I, I I'm, as right now I ain't messing with no toe. Uh, okay. Well, what do you think about Young Miami saying that she likes golden showers? Uh, uh, different. Okay. <laughs> I I I ain't turning up into no euro, dog. I ain't doing it. <laughs> nah. I've, I, I, on, had on, on, on. <laughs> I had a girl. No, hold I, I, on, hold on. I remember one of my one of my Bl exes Vlad. was into was into that. Vlad, yeah, you pissed on a bitch, Vlad. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Vlad, I can you, tell you, you that tell I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't. I didn't get it. Like, like I did it, and she was all like, "Ooh, ooh," and I'm like, "Okay, this is weird." I mean, and actually, and and the thing is about it is that like, How, for one, for I, I got a couple questions. Okay, go ahead. How do the conversation start on, A, I want you to piss on me, and for two, where was this? And just, what's the process like? Because I can't, I don't see me being hard and pissing. Yeah. Okay. So, so like, all right. So, the conversation started because she said that she's done it before and, and she likes it. Okay. Right? And I asked her to describe why she likes it. And, and she said that, like, when you do it, it's kind of like breaking a boundary of intimacy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, we're so close that even, like, urinating is not, like, taboo between us. It's like we're, we're, we're that close to each other that even pissing is, like, you know, not considered a taboo. Right? So... We we went to the shower, right? Because you know you don't really want to so, clean so up. So you were like, let's go to the shower real quick and piss. No, no, it was her idea. Like the, she, she was said, the driving she, she force. Said, let's go get in the shower right? and come piss on me. Yeah, she said that. So I went to the shower, and and you gotta understand that it kind of like it takes you a while to actually even yeah, do that cause because I, it's, you can't piss on hard. Right, exactly. So you you like, kind of have to soften up a little bit, and then you sort of have to. Because, you know, you spent your whole life pissing into a toilet, and now you got this person in front of you 
So you got to like, you know, you got to get over that. So it, it took me a while to even do it. Nice. And nice. and after I did it, I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. And, and she liked it. And we we may have done it maybe one 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 time again. I probably only done it twice in my life with the same girl. Uh, and nice. I haven't really done it since because I just I just didn't I just don't get it. You know what I mean? So it was like, all right, that's cool. She liked it. I did it for her. You know what I mean? Because she would do a lot of shit for me. So it was like, all right. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know about the bond. Well, it might be a boundary thing for her, but I feel, I like I like like okay, with, like with anal, right? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of men we like to hit chicks in the ass, but I, I know why though, because I feel like. It's more of a like a it's like a dominance type of thing. Like I got the power over you. Anything on you, I get the touch and type shit. So I get I kind of get that, but it's kind it's just weird because as a man, I know the only way I could piss is if I'm not on hard. So as far as this being sexy and a turn on, I don't I definitely don't know what the man would get out of it. Besides just like wanting to. It's like, oh, well, okay, it's like almost like spitting on a bitch, like, cause you know, you wanna just, like I say, it's that dominance thing, and you just wanna, like, degrade her and just make her feel beneath you and she under you type shit. But yeah, pissing? Yeah, no, I mean, pissing, at least for me, it wasn't a dominance thing, cause it was even if she, that don't she don't clean the hair do. good enough, I gotta, I might smell it. <laughs> I don't, if I, if I, don't, I don't know, if I, I can't, I can't even, it took me, listen, I'm 26, it took me 20, it took me fifteen something years to start spitting on spitting. Yeah, and I never let a bit spit in my mouth. That's just different. I I spits. Yeah, I've, I've I done just, a fair amount I just of spitting. Cannot see I mean, you know, spitting is cool. Spitting in mouth, spitting on the face, like it's kind of like uh, just being in the moment of it all. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't never think I'd be in the moment of, pi of pissing. I've, I've got, I know, I've got, I've had a girl spit, spit in my face before. It's, I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting. I mean, just in the moment of but it all. But if she would have ate anything, you would have smelt it. You mean the spit? Yeah, I mean, I usually shower after sex. You know the what I'm saying? But speak out of smell, bro. Spit? Yeah, I mean, have I ever had someone spit in my mouth? I think I don't know. I mean, I've spit in a girl's mouth. I mean, I know girls who who, who love that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um. I don't know, man. Listen, it's it's sex, and, and and you know how sex is. It's all mental, right? I mean, obviously there's the physical part, but I don't care how bad of a chick you have in your bed. If you're not into her and there's no connection, you're probably not going to get hard, right? What? If you if y'all just don't have a vibe, this could be the baddest bitch ever. You're just not going to get hard. So Oops. you got to understand that it's all in your head. So when you talk about all these emotions that are happening in the spur of the moment and in the heat of passion and everything else like that, I mean, a lot of times, I mean, listen, you know, uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've done anal with a girl before. Um, not my favorite thing to do, but I've done it. You know, it doesn't feel as good as a vagina, right? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, listen, I, I've like I say, it's just the, it's just, that's, that with that is more of a, like a, Basically, because for one, as far as spitting, right? I can spit in the chick mouth, but if if I like, I spit on the bitch face. You feel me? But for that, I can only really do that with the chicks. Like I want to slut you. It's sometimes it's hard to slut somebody like you love, love. You feel me? I feel, I yeah. think that's another reason why men cheat. I went. I, I don't. I think a lot of. I think that's a reason. Yeah. So, some yeah, men I, like I, they don't want to take they they wife. Spit on her, hit her ass, make her feel just like shit or downgrading because it's my wife. She's supposed to be my queen, my pet on a pedestal. You feel me? But I could take this the little chick from the club. I could spit on her, slap the fuck out of her. You feel me? Put my thumb all the way in the ass, and yeah, now get the fuck on, bitch. You feel me? It's crazy. It's mental. Yeah, it's mental. It's mental though. It's all. It's all mental, man. I'm telling you, like. <laughs> I mean, especially me, like I got OCD, you know, obsessive compulsive disorder. I mean, I I've had times in my life where like, like I wouldn't get hard one time and then suddenly it's in my head that I can't get hard no more. And then I'd have to go through this like stretch where I needed to get my kind of head back in the game where I could start getting hard again. And then boom, like I'm, I'm right back in it. And then like, 
You know what I'm saying? Like I'm all good. But then if suddenly you have, you see what I'm saying? And that, that that's just me and my, you know, kind of mental issues. You know what I'm saying? Me being OCD. It's like you, you start to live in your own head and you start thinking like, oh shit, my shit don't work. I can't get hard no more. And it's like, no, your shit's fine. It's just yeah. that. Mine, if I'm know, take if I'm taking off like uh with my anxiety and if, if I'm taking like if I'm surprised too too like too surprising to where like there's like shocking, I'm fucking around can't get hard. I done walked in on like five bitches eating each other one time before. I walk in that motherfucker, I'm like, oh shit. I didn't know I was getting this. You feel me? And that motherfucker right. just couldn't jump right at the at first. You feel me? About 20, 30 yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah, man. This is this is real shit. And like men, men want to pretend like they Superman. I get hard anytime. Nah. You know, I'm a porn star. I like I say, it man. is mental because it, and it deals with your how your blood pump. You know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, this is why the Viagras and Cialis of the world have a place because they. I can't take know. none of that stuff. I tried. I tried. Um. I tried a hundred pack before, and the shit just give me sick ass headaches, and my dick can't get hard at all. Really? Well, f- for me, I mean, during my heyday. <laughs> <laughs> During my heyday, <laughs> when you were pissing people. on bitches. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that was before too. But but you know you know what I found for me, and, and all, all the dudes that's listening to this, all the young dudes, pay attention to what I'm about to say because this is important. For me, uh, Viagra became really useful whenever I use condoms. Right, because before I started using Viagra. With condoms, I was very hit or, hit or miss. I was like 50-50. Sometimes I can get hard and usually come, and sometimes that condom would just, nah. Like, I can't get no feeling, whatever else. Once I start taking Viagra, I can get hard every time. I use a condom every time, and that probably kept me from probably catching a bunch of diseases and having a bunch of extra kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So so for me, that's the purpose of Viagra. Like, But if I'm going raw, I don't, I don't need Viagra. I'm fine. But like, if I'm using condoms, Viagra is actually a really useful tool. So all these dudes that's out there that's going raw on everything because they're worried they can't get hard, there is there is an alternative. Man, fuck that. Fuck that. Yeah. I mean, listen, I'm, like I, I said, I'm, it's all I'm, mental and everyone has their own thing. I'm scared of these coochers out here, dog. I'm scared. Uh, yeah. For real talk. I, it's, it's to the point where I fuck around. I keep home tested sometimes. Oh, yeah. Like I feel, I feel one lip movement down there. I'll be like, oh, let me send it on off. Shit, no. Oh yeah, no. You you got you got a lot of shit these days, man. Not, not only do you have home HIV tests that you could take it right then and there, and like I think like 15 minutes later, you can see the result of both people. You know, there's that. Uh, there is uh, something called Truvada, which you could take. That's like 99 percent effective of preventing HIV if you come in contact with it. It's like a daily pill that you take. Yeah. You didn't know about that? Yeah. Yeah. It's a whole, it's basically like it's, it's HIV medication at a very low rate, very low dosage. So let's just say you fuck someone and they're HIV positive. You're like 99% sure not to catch it from them. It's like a lot of the porn stars, a lot of the athletes take that shit. So, but like, do they use HIV to make the medicine? No. No, because you know HIV. most medicines they take the actual disease and all that. No, nah, no, nah, it's a whole. There's a whole science, but it's it's basically the, the same shit that people take once they get HIV to prevent it from flaring up and, and killing them. It's a low dosage of that. So if you stay on it, if you come in contact with it, you're ninety nine percent likely not to catch it. So if you're out there slanging raw dick everywhere you go, you get you some wouldn't be a bad idea to take this shit. <laughs> you just did a whole commercial for Travada. <laughs> I did a whole, I did a whole commercial because like, people don't know about it. Got, people don't know about it, you know. But but honestly, you hit, people like man, you gonna hit your like Magic like, Johnson. Man, you know, Magic Johnson talks about it. You know you, know you, you know you're a business man. You gonna hit him up like, hey, I got the segment where I'm, <laughs> I need y'all to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, oh, well, hey, I, I, this ain't got nothing to do with the interview. I'm sorry, go but ahead. I talked to your boy over Boondocks, man. Oh, Carl Jones. Yeah, he wrote me back. Yeah, he I dope. told him I, I was like, I want to do some business with him whenever, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, like that. Yeah, man. Carl Jones made me a character in the Boondocks, which at the really? time was was my... F- yeah, you, you didn't know that? No, it's, it's Vlad. Pull it up. I just had to tell you that because I was so excited, bro. Because this is one of my dreams to uh do the voice thing. 
on a cartoon or something. Yeah, no, I mean, me, me and Carl were cool, right? And Carl was like, Carl was kind of like the, the co-writer and, and, and the, kind of the head artist of the right. Boondocks, or co-head artist along with Aaron Magruder. And like me and him just started to talk. And uh, I remember I went to their studio and they showed me on their wall, they had all these Vlad TV uh, like printouts because they were using the stories we covered for their skits, you know, for ideas of their skits. And I remember one day I was like, we were just talking. I'm like, yo, man, put, put me in. And he was like, oh, you know something we got? We actually got this, uh, this scene that I think would make sense to have you in there. Because it was like, it was a, the DJ scene was already laid out, but it was kind of like a random make-believe DJ. And it's like, oh, it makes sense to put Vlad in there because it was like two rappers beefing and it kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. It, 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 sort, it sort of made a certain amount of sense. So, so, you know, they called me down to Sony Studios. They gave me a script. Uh, I did a few takes. They took some pictures of me afterwards. And then, yeah, I ended up in the cartoon. I mean, that's one of my dreams. I want to I wanna voice a cartoon. Yeah. I mean, actually being myself in the cartoon was like, like it was mind blowing. Because it's that's, like, oh shit. Because it was my favorite show at the time. Yeah. Wow, facts. That shit was fire. Yeah, but you should reach out to Carl. Carl's a good dude. Mm. There was a there was a clip I found a while back. Uh, it was like a celebrity basketball game, and uh, you and Tory Lanes were both playing in it. Okay. Did you know Tory at all, or was that just you guys were just in that game? And oh. that's it? <laughs> so I'm, I met Tory. It was kind of a weird situation. Uh, I don't. But we uh, we met. We was dealing with a, the same female. <laughs> okay. So uh, I I knew him. We had like a too much of a personal uh, relationship and I seen him on his flight to LA when they said he had to go on out there for the uh, for the trial and stuff so yeah okay what did you think about that trial and the outcome <laughs> I don't want to be a part of uh, the negative uh, energy with that <laughs> man yeah. I just what I uh, well, well, I'm gonna say I feel like with everything that was said and, and, and some of the personal testimonies of what they seen happen, I'm gonna just say I don't know. Yeah. I don't you know what I'm saying? And and I and I and I said it with the most respect to me and I I met her a couple of times. I had uh, that's their situation. I don't wanna be I do not wanna be a part of those politics and 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 I love our black women. And I'm definitely, a, I'm definitely against men putting their hands on women, any type of violence towards a woman. I'm definitely against it. All, all I can say from my from my point of view, I, I I don't I don't know. I have no idea. That shit crazy. Yeah, listen, it, it was a messy situation. Uh, the, the trial, you know, with uh, Kelsey taking the stand and changing her whole story up and. And so forth. And, and Tory actually came forward recently and said that he had wished that he had actually taken the stand to testify. His lawyer told him not to testify and take the stand. So he took his lawyer's advice, and, you know, but ultimately he was found guilty. I mean, when you think about cases like this, usually the person who's being charged does not take the stand in situations like this. Right. Do you think that that's the right move or do you feel like if you know you're innocent, you should be taking the stand, even if your lawyer's telling you not to. Um, it's mixy because some people like some people are not good at talking. You know what I'm saying? Some people are not good at interpreting what they're trying to say. So it's mixy. It's either other or. Um, all I know is, like I say, no disrespect to Megan. Them, I I feel like the truth should just be told. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? If 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 even if 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 he did, even if he did, and it was a complete, I'm just like I said, I don't think, I'm not saying if I do think or not. If he did, and it was a complete accident, and the situation was a whole different situation, I just feel like it's, man, we got too many people, we losing too many people from the streets and these jail cells, bro. You feel me? So if he do not belong there, he do not need to be there. You feel me? Yeah. I don't, and, and, and even if, like I say, I'm not saying if motherfucker did or didn't, but man, listen, and I know a lot of people be trying to protect stuff. Motherfucker, let's protect all our people, you hear me? Yeah, I mean, look, I had Tony Yayo on my show recently. 
And, and a lot of people, look, ultimately, where I think Tory got it mixed up a little bit is that he felt that the court of public opinion mattered in that courtroom. Because every time I did a poll during the trial, you know, do you think Tory is going to be found not guilty? Who did the shooting? Every poll had Tory being innocent. Someone else did the shooting. You know, I think more people voted for Megan shooting herself than Tory actually shooting her in one of my polls. You didn't know, one the, of the public, the, the public was behind Tory is what I'm saying. But in the courtroom, that shit don't matter. Didn't one of the witnesses say that they seen a man shoot, I mean, a woman shoot and then Tory shoot now? I think I think that there was something around that, you know. I mean, it, it was it was it's all messed up, but uh, so you know, that, ain't, that ain't my business though. That's all no. Yeah, no. Listen, uh, it's it's a mess up situation, I'm afraid, I'm but ultimately, it, I, I think what it, this is what it comes me. down to, you know, like like Tony Yayo, I think said it best. He said, "Look, he said where I'm from, you know, Southside Queens, if you shoot somebody and they survive and they take the stand and say that this person shot me." You should be taking a plea deal before that ever happens. If the witness, if the victim lives and is willing to get on the stand and point the finger at you and say, this is the person who shot me, you don't stand a chance in a courtroom. It doesn't matter what other shit you got going on. If somebody's saying you shot them and they still alive and they're willing to take the stand, in my eyes, you're, gonna beat the, you're not going to beat the fucking case. Yeah. I've never seen that in my life. Somebody saying you shot him and you taking it to trial? Yeah. And I guess his confidence of taking a trial, everybody believed him. The internet judge, oh, he lying. This, this one shot him and the girl shot him. It was a lot of confusion to yeah. the case. The sad part about it is just playing with the gun. When you're from the streets, you don't play with guns. Like yeah. you don't, you know what I'm saying? It's no, a gun is nothing to play with. It's not a toy. And some unfortunate happened. Uh, but yeah. that, that that becomes the most important testimony. You that's see what right. I'm saying? Listen, that's right. But what if what if in your head you didn't? Well, you know what I'm saying. Then, that's why I say it's mixed. It's like, what do I do? You feel what, me? What do you, what, what do you do? And and this is where lawyers come in, and this is where you because some people be innocent and they'll just take some just to get because like the whole court situation that shit is stressful as fuck. You feel me? Yeah. So some people cannot handle that, and they'll just take some just to get the situation over. I take right, but he, didn't, he, he didn't take it though, right? He, he didn't take a plea deal. And, and that's the whole thing. That's what I'm saying. Like, like Tony I don't think they offered him anything, did deal. they? I'm sure he, they, I mean, listen, we don't know what's happening behind the scenes because it, that part wasn't out there, but I'm pretty sure, I'm almost positive that they offered him some sort of plea deal that he didn't want to take. And listen, Tory had never done any prison time before. So I'm sure he was scared to death of even doing a year, right? If you've never been to prison before, you're five foot two, like, you know, especially, you're a millionaire and you're popping, yeah, you got girls. I mean, uh, some jails be different. Like, like, uh, well, you might find somebody in there who fans of you and they like, hey, I got your back type shit. But most of the time, like, if you got money, you ain't trying to be in no jail because now you got to worry about people handling all your business for you and all that shit. That shit ain't what's down. Yeah. Yeah, no, listen. And, and it, it's, uh, I'm sure that whatever plea deal he took, you know, he was offered, it was probably just too much. I mean, let's just say they offered him 10 years. And he was like, nah, fuck it. And on top of that, he'll get deported, right? He's probably gonna get deported, right? After right. he's done with the with the prison sentence. Yeah. So So he's not trying to risk all that. He make his money over here. Yeah, exactly. And you know, listen, he's he's working on his appeal right now. He got Suge Knight's old lawyer, David Kenner, on the shit. Then he got this other lawyer that helped uh, Casey Anthony get off. He charges two hundred thousand a month as a retainer. Not <laughs> non refundable. So we got some money. Yeah. <laughs> This is the same guy that was representing Harvey Weinstein at one point and hit him up for like a million bucks, you know, just legal fees. Uh, so, so now, you know, I, I just wish it, I wish everybody in the whole situation the best and the truth. And you know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I, I, I hope just on the strength, not even if he did, even if he didn't, uh, I just, I hope that he just come out with a better situation. Cause I, I just hate to see somebody lost to the system. You know what I'm saying? Well, one of my, uh, one of my YouTube members, DJ IE, uh, he had brought up that you used to actually visit Jackson State football games when uh, Deion Sanders was coaching. Yeah. How'd you feel about Deion leaving? I don't care. <laughs> don't matter? <laughs> I, I mean, uh, 
I don't, I mean, I know they probably take that Jackson State probably took that person because he came over there and and changed their program and and took him somewhere. But I feel like I don't know. I guess they expected him to be there for life. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't know. I mean, he wanna he accomplished what he wanted to accomplish there. He wanna accomplish something somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? That's just I think that's personal. That's 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 personal feelings. Uh, as like for as me, I don't want to go. I'm about to go platinum. After I go platinum, I want to go. You know what I'm saying? I might not stay with Def Jam. Do Def Jam expect me to stay with them for life? You know what I'm saying? So people want to try new things and people want to experience new things. Well, yeah. And on top of it, he had to give up part of his own salary to pay his staff. I don't know if you know this part of the story, but they weren't paying him enough to actually build the program he needed to build to win championships. So he actually took his own money and was paying his football staff out of his own pocket in order to make it happen. So that should, and, that should uh, let you know how much it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't about self. It was about accomplishing a goal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a real one. Yeah, but ultimately you can't keep doing that forever. You know, if the school doesn't want to step up and, you know what I mean? And like a lot of these big schools, they have boosters that are donating millions and millions of dollars to get these programs. I wouldn't think the that he need the money though. You know what I'm saying? I, I well, feel like I feel like in his career he didn't make like he I'm not I mean, he not he a smart brother he don't come off as you know what I'm saying so I'm pretty sure he's he's he didn't say it up to where he's he's safe I, I feel like he doing right. most of this more of enjoyment. Well, yeah, but what I'm saying is I mean I think I, I could be wrong though, but I believe he was paid like three hundred thousand a year and he had to take one hundred fifty of that and give it to his own staff, like. Do you really want to keep doing that year after year after year if the school's not stepping up and saying, "Okay, you, you guys do a championship. All right, we'll we got it now. Like we'll 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 come up with more money. We'll do this," as opposed to saying like and assuming that this guy's going to stay forever because oh, if you leave an HBCU, you're going to be called a sellout. I don't think he cared. But if he cared, on, uh, if, if he cared and he needed that money, he wouldn't have took that cut. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, in my head, like. The 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 uh what's the word I'm looking for when people like striving for something the his hunger for more and more yeah like this man played two three different sports already you know what I'm saying now he's a coach he knew, went and got the championship right he did it at one school now in my eyes I see him going to do it at a bigger school and then maybe trying to actually be a a coach in the NFL or something if he could you feel me that's what I see. He got one of he got that hunger, you know what I'm saying? That he always he got to feed that appetite. You feel me? So I don't think he too much need the money. It's just more about okay, yeah, it's cool to get the money, but it's more about accomplishing his goals that he want to get done. You know what I'm saying? Well, speaking of money, you know, you've had a while now to start making money, right? Yeah. You've been consistently making money since since we started doing these interviews years ago. At this point in time, at your age with the amount of money that you've made, and you know how the music industry is, right? Like, you're going to be hot one year, and then that next year, things might not work out. You right. know, like, you see lots of artists that that were hot to death one year. Two years later, they're still getting all that, all those same features, but but those, those streaming numbers have, have fallen off tremendously because for whatever reason, people have moved on to the difference, you know, whatever the new style is, whoever the new hot rapper is. When you look at yourself financially, do you feel like you understand how money works and you understand how investing works and yeah. so forth? Or do you feel like, now nah, I've made some bad decisions and I really need to step it up in the upcoming years to get it right? Uh, as far as me personally, all my music, and all my big spending go right back in the, uh, in the music. Like, like I tell people all the time, I go grab a crazy ass house right now. I, I bought my house. You know what I'm saying? As soon as I signed my deal, my first year, like I told you, my first year and a half, I was I was independent. I got a house out in Miami. I rented for a year. I said, let me see how this go. How, let me see if I can really fuck with this music industry and see if I can afford buying a house. You get what I'm saying? I did that. As soon as I did my major deal, I went and bought this house. You get what I'm saying? Uh, so I don't think I make too many bad choices. I'm, I say I know sometimes I could be super safe, too safe. To where like I can mix the opportunities sometimes, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Um, and I'm no, I I mean, I do good as hell. I I, I easily like the last two years I've made 
over a million dollars on just street shows, and I do all my bookings myself. I I got that hunger to do better. You feel me? So it's always room for improvement. It's always I can do better. It's always more I can make. You know what I'm saying? I'm just keep working. There we go. So what's next for you? I mean, because uh, in terms of your your projects, the UNLV that was the last mixtape you put out. I, 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 it was it was supposed to be a tape, but I called it an album for my fulfillment. Um, I'm working on my next album. Well, I'm, I'm really done with it. I just got like two features I'm trying to put on there. Excuse me. Called Yes, I'm Sad. Uh, it's basically about um, like last year, it was, it was a lot of mental stuff going on, having a child, having all these different challenges, um, getting over, going to jail for nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I was I was depressed most of the year last year. And, and basically, I'm just showing, it's not going to be a sad project, but it's going to be showing this is what I made when I was depressed and, and a lot of artists, other artists go through this too. So it's gonna be called Yes, I'm Sad. Yeah, I mean, look, you had artists like XXX and Tacion, they came in and really talked about, you know, depression and sadness and mental health and so forth. Before then, I feel like hip hop never really yeah. talked about that. Now, it was just bragging yeah. and saying everything's always great. Yeah, now and, that you say that, uh, pain music, I don't think really came into play until like around that time. Like, yeah, and, and look, X did it on a level, I mean, really at the biggest level. I mean, that that last album he dropped was like one of the biggest albums I think ever in the last ten years. I mean, feel like I'm trapped in my own diamond mind. and everything else like that. Feel like I'm trapped in my own mind. I mean, dying at night time. That shit was fire as hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he was he was amazing, man. And then I think that really kind of opened the door, especially especially with someone like him. That like, if you think about how he got on. Songs like Look at Me, like Look at Me, Fuck on Me. Like to do that and then suddenly come out with a whole album talking about depression and have that shit be way bigger than the shit he was known for was such a like a courageous thing to do artistically. And the fact that it opened the door, and I feel like, you know, to projects like you're talking about, about being sad, like 10 years ago, no one would have put that shit out. Right. You know, I I think no one would have talked about an album about sadness, but now, uh, you know, you have hip hop showing it's really human, and it's not just, you know, money doesn't solve every problem. You know, no matter how much money you have, I mean, it helps. <laughs> you know, it's better than being broke. But uh, yeah, man, I think it's dope that you're actually embracing that part of yourself and opening that up as an artist, because uh, it's a hard thing to do. Right. Yeah, man. Fredo Bang, always a pleasure. You know, me and you have been 100 since day one. Like, literally, since you first came out with, you know, started dropping music. I've always been there fucking with you. You've been fucking with me. We've always had a good relationship. Uh, you know, we've never taken sides. Like, hip hop, unfortunately, is one of these areas that, like, no matter who you are, whether you're a rapper, producer, you know, media outlet, you try not to take sides, but a lot of times you're forced into these situations. You know what I'm saying? Like, you try to be neutral, but then someone gets offended over you doing an interview or a feature or producing someone's beat or whatever, and it turns into that. And I'm glad that with our relationship, that's never happened. Well, I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? That would, yeah. Yeah, that we've been able to keep a, a cool professional relationship with each other and continue to do interviews and continue to support each other without getting caught up in whatever bullshit we're going through personally at the time that have nothing to do with what we do. You know what I mean? Really so good. I always wish you the best, man. Congrats on your success. Congrats on the new baby, first and foremost. Thanks. 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 You know, Thanks. we'll see if you have some more along the way. <laughs> and uh, yo, man, just wish you all the best. Appreciate you, man. That's what it is. Peace. <laughs>